So I want you to stand up with me. And I'm going to read the Passion Translation. And I want you just to receive hope this morning. Come on, how many of you feel like you've dealt with just a little bit of hopelessness? You're not really sure where this year's going? Not really sure where this season's going? Some of you don't care where this season is going. You just got trust in God. Come on, isn't that kind of how we'd have to just kind of kind of just say, God, lead us. Okay, lift your hands up. We're going to just decree this over you. Now, may God, the inspiration and fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with his super abundance until you radiate with hope. Come on, can we give the Lord a shout? A hopeful shout. A joy-filled shout. A peace-filled shout. All right. Wait, wait, wait. We're going to do the shout again because y'all were like, Okay, like let your face know that you're excited about your future, okay? All right, so we're going we're gonna to try that again, and we're going to put a smile on our face, and we're going to give the Lord a shout of praise, excitement, and exuberance, knowing that super abundance of hope is coming. Come on. He's the God of all hope. He's the God of hope. Come on, he's the God of hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoo. Okay, you can be seated. Now, why do I do that? It's not just because I want to hear you make noise. It's because there's something that happens when you open your mouth. There's something that happens when you open your mouth. It literally aligns you to what God says. It aligns you to heaven to bring heaven down to earth. All right? So we've got to have a reset of our strength, a reset of our hope. And the last thing I want to talk about, which is not the last thing, because you can put reset of whatever it is you need to reset in. Okay? But I think we're going to reset our peace so that we can dream again, so that we can dream bigger dreams. Okay? Several weeks ago, it's probably been a month ago now, on a Sunday morning during our prayer time, I was walking back and forth in the prayer room, and I heard the Lord say, the God of peace is rising. The God of peace is rising. The God of peace is rising. I, I just heard the Lord say it over and over. The God of peace is rising. And of course, this comes out of Romans 16, 20, which declares, and the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. Amen? Look at, look at what it actually says in the Passion Translation. And the God of peace will swiftly pound Satan to a pulp under your feet. Now, that sounds a little violent for talking about peace. Come on. How many know that God's not afraid of getting a little violent against our enemy to bring us into peace? And the God of peace will swiftly pound Satan to a pulp under your feet. Not, to, not just his feet, under your feet. Say, under my feet. And the wonderful favor of our Lord Jesus will surround you. So if we're going to reset our peace, we might have to reset what we think about peace. Isaiah chapter 6, uh, sorry, chapter 9 verse 6 talks about Jesus, the coming Messiah. And it says, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, which by the way means Father of our future, okay? But then it says his name is what? Prince of Peace, okay? That word prince is very interesting because it does not mean one that walks around with a crown on, with a royal robe, looking like he should rule. Okay? That's not what the word prince means at all. What the word prince means is the Hebrew word sar, S-A-R, and it means one who contends, one who wrestles, one who fights, one who governs, and one who rules. 
So you see, what Jesus is doing during this season and what God is saying is when my people get in alignment, when they start opening their mouth and getting an agreement with me, I rise up as a mighty man of war and I become their prince of peace, meaning that I'm going to fight against anything that's been sent to rob them of living in the shalom anointing of God. Shalom. Look at somebody. Tell them shalom. Shalom. Hebrew greeting means so much more than just peace. See, we think peace means tranquility. Shalom means so much more than that. Shalom actually means, it has this, this connotation of, um, uh, in, in Hebrew, it means, it means uh, peace, tranquility. It means favor. It means prosperity. It means safety and protection. It means to have favor with God and favor with man. That's that picture of Aleph again, heaven and earth, favor with God, favor with man. Okay? Somebody preached a message one time. I have no idea who it was, but I stole their stuff. I'm telling you I stole their stuff. I didn't originate this. But they said that peace, shalom, actually means nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing damaged. Okay? And when we hear the God of peace is rising... I started, uh, we, we were having a conversation with somebody that studies Hebrew, and they said this. They, they said, you can go to that, that next slide. I think, that, I think that it's on the next slide. Yeah, let's look at this verse. Uh, Philippians 4, verse 7. It, it's, a, it's a fascinating verse um, where it says this. It says, and the peace of God, which passes understanding, shall guard or shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. And then it goes into the passages about think on these things. Whatsoever is true and lovely and of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things and the God of peace will be with you in all things. So understand we've actually got to partner with the God of peace. If you're filling your mind full of a bunch of stuff that's robbing your peace, maybe you need to stop. If, you, if you're watching the news and you're losing your salvation... I'm not saying completely stop, but maybe you need to learn how to intercede through that. Okay? And think on these things. But what's really interesting is when you study this, the word guard or keep literally is a, it's a Greek word, phureo. And phureo means um, to be a watcher or to be a watchman in advance, to see what's coming. The peace of God will see what's coming. Okay? It's very prophetic. But then it also is a military term that the word guard or keep is this word fureo. And it, and it means that a, a, a military sentinel that is stationed at the gate to guard against hostile invasion. That's what fureo means. So it says the peace of God is actually going to act as a military sentinel at the gate of your heart and your mind to guard against any kind of hostile invasion that wants to come in and rob you of your peace. But we've got to partner with God. Think on these things, and the God of peace will be with you in all things. So we are going to see this anointing, this stationed at the, the gate of our mind. Now, as we were talking to this Hebrew scholar, and you can go to that next slide, there we see this word shalom, peace, prosperity, safety, and favor. But you know, each Hebrew word, you can go to the next slide, then each Hebrew word is made up of, obviously, Hebrew letters. And the Hebrew letters for shalom are the, word, are the letters shin, lamed, vav, and mem. Okay, and each one of these letters has a word picture. How many of you remember vav? Do you remember vav? Vav is a hook. Vav is a steak. You ever wonder what this is about? That's a vav. We stake our claim. We stake the ground. We stake it for the kingdom of God. It's also kind of a hook. So you hook heaven and you pull it down to earth. Come on, so we got we to do prophetic acts sometimes to, to, to symbolize. But that's what a vav is, okay? It establishes. It, 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 uh, it, it, it authorizes. And so that's just an example for you. But... If you take the meaning of each of these words, then this is what shalom means. It means peace comes when you destroy the authority of chaos by infusing the presence of the Lord. 
come on guys, there's a lot of chaos in the world today. The church has got a job to do. We don't fight flesh and blood. And we don't get into fleshly battles. First, we let the Lord take authority here in our minds. And we destroy and overthrow chaos in our minds. Doubt, unbelief, anything that wants to get you out of alignment with God. You know why we worship? Not because God needs to be worshipped. He's, he's got all these angels around his throne that worship him all the time. We worship because God knows we need to worship him. Because when we worship, it aligns our heart and our mind with the word of God. And it creates an atmosphere for the shalom of God to come down. If you've got sickness in your body, that's chaos. That's out of alignment. That's what chaos means. Stuff's out of alignment. This is a year of alignment. It's a year of apostolic alignment. It's that, uh, that Aleph year to bring things into alignment over our personal lives, over our bodies, over our marriages. Come on, if your marriage is out of alignment, if you're, if you're fighting and button heads all the time, get your marriage in alignment this year. If your kids are out of alignment, get your kids in alignment this year. <laughs> you're like, oh, Pastor Jane, yes, alignment. Come on, it can't just be up here. It's got to be worked out. Some of you need to get your finances in alignment. Alignment. Because when we get into that place of alignment and we overthrow chaos, disorder, dysfunction, then peace comes.